Hey, what's going on everyone? Brian from Drywall Nation here. Welcome to another educational video with Level 5 Tools. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to run your flat box on ceilings. So we've already gone ahead and filled our flat box with joint compound. If you're not sure what your mud consistency should look like, make sure to look for our other educational videos with level five tools where we talk about mud consistency. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on the ceiling here. I'm gonna start right against the wall and I'm gonna let go of my brake. And as I start to push away, you can see we're starting to dispense mud along the ceiling. So you can see our mud is a little thick on the ceiling. I was running that box wide open on zero so that means along the back here on the tension adjuster i didn't have it set to any number i'm just running it wide open you can see the mud is quite thick so we're just gonna fine tune that a little bit we're gonna put that to one and then we're gonna start back up at the start here in case you're wondering why our butt joints aren't staggered that's because we are using butt board by trimtex and what that does is it recesses your butt joints and creates a floating joint. So now I've just gone ahead and I've done the whole butt joint in one direction. You can see there are a few little bubbles and pockets if you look closely. Little bubbles in the mud. That's why it's good practice to go over your seams twice. So this is called tracing or chasing. So I already came here in one direction. Now I'm going to redo the whole seam going back in the other direction and you're going to see that's going to clean up a lot of those little bubbles. So you can see we've already done our first long seam right down the middle of the ceiling. Now we're going to do our bevel coming into our butt joint. So I ran this seam on setting number three. So you can see you can kind of faintly see the edges of the drywall. To me, that's not really a thick enough coat. So I backed it off to two. So now I have a little more of a concave there. So now it's going to add a little more mud. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this seam. You can see the difference between these two. You can see this joint is a little more loaded than this one here. You can see here on the very edges, you can see it's already a little dry. You can see the shoulder of the drywall. And on this side over here, you can't see it as much. So that's the fill that I'm looking for right there. I want a little bit of a thicker coat on the first pass. That way when I come to run my 12 inch, I'm doing a much tighter skim. Something else you want to avoid is leaving lap marks right in the middle of a seam. So you can see I pulled off here, I left a lap mark there, but what's good practice is to continue that lap mark right next to your closest joint and you pull off before you get to that joint. That way you don't have to come back and sand that lap mark. So I'll show you an example of what I mean. So instead of leaving that there, we're just gonna put our box to the ceiling and we're gonna carry that right to the edge of our next seam, we're pulling the brake and then we're pulling the box off. So now we just eliminated leaving a lap mark right in the middle of our ceiling. Instead, we brought it over to our closest butt joint. We we're able to pull off and feather that lap mark into our joint. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill our flat box up again, put it into our nozzle. We're gonna fill the box back and forth. There we go, it's nice and filled. It's always a good habit to take your finger and just clean the back of your blade. That way if you get any little chunks of dried up mud, it gets rid of that and it stops it from dragging in your mud. So here we're gonna start at the butt joint. We're gonna to work towards the wall, pull our brake. We're gonna come back from this direction. We're gonna finish it. And now we're gonna go over it a second time to help get rid of little any imperfections, pits or bubbles in the mud. And we're gonna carry that lap mark right to our butt joint. So starting at the wall, I'm gonna let go of my brake. And then as I get near, I'm gonna pull my brake and lift off right at my butt joint. So same thing, we're trying to get rid of those lap marks in the middle of a seam. This is what I refer to as a Christmas tree. 
So you can see the drags right at the start of our run. So that's most likely because I was pushing a little hard at the start. And what happens is the mud folds over the back of the troweling bar. And then as you start to move forward, that excess mud gets dragged. So I can most likely get rid of that if I just very lightly go up to it and pull without pushing too hard. You can see those Christmas trees are a lot smaller now. So now I'm gonna show you how to carry your flat box from room to room or just around the job site. You wanna carry it just under the head, right where your flat box handle meets the actual box. So carry it right underneath there. It's easy to carry like this, it's well balanced. You don't wanna be carrying it by the brake. For one, it's very uncomfortable because it's top heavy, so it just it's not very naturally balanced. And two, it's unnecessary wear and tear on the brake itself. So carry it right under the head where the handle meets the box. That way it's nice and well balanced, it's easy to carry. And then when you go to put it to the ceiling, that's when you transition to the brake. You're able to let go of this top hand, hold the brake in place. And then when you have your box to the ceiling, you can let go of that brake and start to roll freely. And then you pinch your brake again, just a few inches before you're getting ready to pull off. So I'll show you here, I got my hand on the brake. I'm gonna let go. I'm able to roll away. And then as I get towards the end of the seam, I pinch that brake again and pull off. So now I'm just gonna go ahead full tilt. I'll just run the box like I normally do. I'm gonna focus on ceilings. So I'll take you guys along with me and I'll kind of give tips and tricks as we go along. So here I'm gonna be starting at my butt joint. Again, we use Trimtex butt board. That's why our butt joints aren't staggered. So passed over the seam once. Now we're gonna come back over a second time. I'm gonna pull my brake at the end, pull off. I'm gonna start on this side, release my brake, pull my brake again at the end. If you take a look here, you'll see these are the little Christmas trees. If you want to eliminate it altogether, thicken your mud or push a little lighter. So you can see I have Christmas trees on both sides. If I kind of clean the back of my box here, just wipe my fingernail along there and I go over it so you can see how heavy that Christmas tree is. If I just go over it lightly without pushing too much, completely eliminated that Christmas tree. You get a lot less distance out of your first coat of mud. This is called your block coat or your fill coat. We're getting a little more than usual because we're using the mega flat box by level five. So it holds 50% more mud than your standard classic. So I talked about eliminating lap marks. So you can see all along these seams on the ceiling, there's no lap mark in the middle of the seam. I carried it right through the butt joint where I was able to pull my brake and kind of pull the box off so there's no lap mark in between. Now, in an instance like this short seam here, I'm working between two walls. There's nowhere for me to pull off, so I have to leave a lap mark right in the middle there. So I'll go one way, come back the other way, I'll finish that half of the seam, and I'm gonna go over the whole thing again, leaving a lap mark in the middle because it's unavoidable in this instance. So all along this ceiling here, we're gonna have a little lap mark in the middle of this seam because we're finishing between two finished walls. And those little lap marks, we just pre-sand those between coats. So after this 10 inch coat dries, we're gonna come back tomorrow and pre-sand this. So now you can see where our little flip marks are quick pre-sand before running our next coat. And of course, our next coat is gonna be two inches bigger. On our first coat, we're passing a 10 inch. On our next coat, we're gonna do a 12 inch box. So when we do our butt joint again, it's gonna overlap these seams by an inch on either side. So it's gonna fill that very nicely. So I hope you enjoyed that video on how to run your flat box on ceilings. For more tips and tricks, make sure to check out the rest of our educational videos with Level 5 Tools. Thanks for watching.